All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Kevin Vogel. I'm your host. I'm the Vice President of Virtualization and Cloud here at Champion Solutions Group. We're going to be covering today the top Office 365 security concerns and how you can address them. I'm lucky enough to have some real experts with me today. I have James Canfield, who's our Director of Cloud Services here at Champion Solutions Group. I have Moto Khan, who's the Director of Product Management at Palo Alto Networks. And I have Killian Egler, who is the Technical Marketing Manager at Verona. So I think you're going to find that we have some really interesting topics here. Uh, we'll try to make sure that these 40 minutes or so that, that you're on uh, the webinar become very, very useful for you. So let's, uh, let's kick this thing off. All right, so our agenda today, uh, today's Office 365 security landscape, we're going to lay it out for you. What Microsoft is doing for you today with their security, uh, the top 10 security and privacy features of Office 365, we're going to talk about Microsoft's new security score, and uh, Jim Canfield's really going to go into detail to show you some of the enhancements that are happening with uh, the Microsoft environment. And then we're going to cover the, 10, uh, the top 10 security concerns, and we're going to have Palo Alto and Veronis covering those and showing how you can enhance your Office 365 and how Okay, and, and how they can actually um, make it better for you over and above what Microsoft does. And, and by the way, they do a pretty good job, but I think you'll find out from both Palo Alto and Veronis how we can do that better for you. And then what champion or what message ops can do for you uh, going forward, and then a call to action. So we'll try to keep it uh, just on those topics. So a quick five-second overview on who uh, Message Ops and Champion is. Message Ops is our cloud uh, business unit here at Champion. We were founded in 1979. We're a, a million-plus uh, revenue organization. As you can see, 20 years of audited financials. But more important than that is what Microsoft thinks about us. We're a gold and silver competencies and things like data center, cloud platform, cloud productivity, uh, our SMB solutions. In fact, we have one of only 14 Azure MVPs that actually uh, work here at Champion. Uh, Microsoft Customer Satisfaction Hero. We're the Azure Partner of the Year and the Cloud Partner of the Year for Microsoft and their Solutions Integrator of the Year. So when it comes to cloud, we, we pretty much have the Microsoft part of it down pat. Um, this is just a quick look at what Microsoft's doing from an architecture standpoint. As you probably know, uh, the Microsoft Cloud is, is a highly guarded secret, so we can't give you a lot of details. But you can see that they have internal perimeter and external security that they're using today to help you secure your environment. I don't want you to think that it's wide open and, you know, you're just out there, um, uh, you know, lost in space. They have some great security. We can just show you how to enhance that security. Right, Jim? Exactly how it works. Okay. These are the top 10 things that they have right now, what they call their security and privacy uh, uh, features that they have. So, uh, first of all, Microsoft restricts physical data access to authorized personnel that have implemented layers of physical security, such as biometrics, uh, motion sensors, 24-hour secure access, this is in all of their cloud facilities. They enabled encryption of both the data at rest and via the network as it's transported. Uh, Microsoft does a great job. It, it does, I mean, it really does a great job at protecting your data so that no one can mine your data. Um, uh, they back up your data, as you can see. They won't delete your data, for instance, if you want to move out of the cloud. They're not going to just all of a sudden you say, I cancel, they're going to throw you out, and they're never going to give you access to your data. So all of that is, is there. So let's get on to this new security score, Jim, and tell us what it's all about. Thank you, Kevin. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, long and short of it is Microsoft, for those of you that are in 365 and those of, the, of you that may not be in 365 yet, um, over the last 
year or so, they've really been maturing uh, the underlying architecture from a security and from a capabilities perspective. And to that end, they've added uh, significant uh, levels of security into the email, SharePoint, link, etc. environment. Now, about oh nine months or so ago, they delivered access to PowerShell-based access to a lot of different log files, etc. But what they've done is most recently, and this is still in beta, is they have delivered what they're calling their secure score. Secure score basically gathers data from all of the different applications that you may have in Office 365. Some of my clients have just Exchange, while others will have Exchange and SharePoint and Link or Skype, etc. And what this does is it takes a look at your environment and comes back with a score. Okay? And that score is based on experience, capabilities, security capabilities, and what you can take advantage of. And it's very interesting because as we go forward, I'll show you the, um, I'll go into the environment, I'll show you real quick, but at the end of the day, it is a, uh, an interface into your 365 environment that will constantly be looking at the different environment and notifying you of your recommendations of how to possibly improve your security. You can utilize some, you don't have to utilize others. So in that slide, basically it refers to it as the credit score for your Office 365 environment. Okay. So as we go forward, okay, and the different pieces, parts that are made available in this environment, it's, for lack of a better word, it's business intelligence as it focuses on your uh, online services, not just email, but a lot of our clients are moving heavily towards OneDrive for Business. OneDrive for Business is something that enables your users to share easily outside of your organization. Well, that's a double-edged sword, and we are all... We all want to make sure that it's not being shared where it shouldn't be, okay? Utilizing an always running, an always on analytic engine, which is what the secure score is, will help you get a better handle on what's happening in your environment. It will allow you to develop and to apply policies using the 365 environment. This is not a real-time tool. This is meant as a guide and a monitoring tool for what's going on. So, um, when you log into it, you'll get your original score. And it's very interesting, um, and I'll show you this in a minute, is they actually show you your tenant as compared to the rest of the 365 tenants globally. And some of the value from this for you is the fact that Microsoft has millions and millions and millions of users across their thousands and thousands and thousands of tenants, and they're pulling and gathering this data for all of them, okay? And you are learning from the experience. You are being notified of security issues and other things that can be applied. So um, it's very interesting. You'll be able to watch as your security, um, your level versus Office 365 increases or decreases as new issues or new holes or new security threats, whatever, become available. So. Um, Finally, this, is, this slide is meant to be funny for geeks. They might find it funny. I do. Um, I entitled it Disclaimer. Microsoft's giving you this great tool to help monitor your 365 environment. However, the disclaimer is this is not a silver bullet. You still need to understand the security capabilities and the security settings, etc. of your 365 environment. I'm not telling you anything you wouldn't have thought of, and I found it funny that in reviewing this service, this is one of the um, slides that I found. So I just I think it's funny. So now this is a when we go into the environment. Okay, you're looking at my demo tenant, and I'm failing miserably. I've got a 59 out of a possible 243 score. Now I've only been in there for a short time. I've made a few changes, uh, etc. But if we go down, what you'll see is that again. There are 29 actions that have been defined or identified that I can possibly take advantage of. Now, for example, I implemented multi-factor authentication into this tenant this morning. Okay? It won't show up. My score won't <laughs> improve probably until tomorrow. But if you look at the right-hand side of the screen, my score is 59. But when they take it <clears throat> excuse me, against the average score of 365 tenants globally, 
I'm amazing. I'm three times better than everybody. So, and as we go down under the actions, when you, when you click on the show button, what it will do is it will show you the different types of notifications, the dip, different types of issues you can look at, okay? And how they're going to affect users, what they're going to do from an application, etc. And then it actually provides the list of the items that you can put in. So for example, when I just mentioned, I enabled multi-factor authentication for the tenant admins. It's going to add 50 points to my score, okay, when it hits. Now the second one is enable multi-factor for my users. I would never, ever, ever do that just as a blanket rule. I might enable multi-factor authentication for people that are not on net or something like that, but these are things that you can choose to use or not. And again, all of this stuff is made available to anyone with an Office 365 tenant, okay? This is not, this is not a replacement. This is not a security shield. This is a report generating environment to tell you, one, what you may be able to do to improve the overall security score of your 365 tenant, two, what, what, what the benefits are, three, it's a great place to stay up to date because Microsoft delivers new, or new capabilities in their tenants. Like, I think it's about every 18 minutes for crying out loud, and I try really hard to stay up to date and I fail. So, and then on the second tab, and this will continue to increase as the application is around more, it will show you my score, and I can look at it today, I can look at it going backwards, etc. And like I said, I've only been up there for a little while, so it really hasn't improved that much. But at the end of the day, this gives us the ability to understand, okay, what the types of challenges that may exist in our environment are. So with that, I'll turn it back to Kevin. Thank you. I see that you can export these reports also, Jim, right? So if you need for compliance reasons or things like that to get what you have set up, you, you can export uh, uh, some, of these, some of these reports out of here? Yeah, all of the data uh, is accessible. You can either deliver it to, let's say, an access database that could be published through SharePoint, directly to SharePoint, or uh, other uh, SQL-type databases for further view. And last, you'll see a lot of links, score analyzer, privilege elevation, etc. This will give you a great place to go for, I know everybody on the phone knows everything there is to know about email security. Uh -huh. These are places where you can go to get a better handle on what these types of changes might affect or how they might affect your environment. Oh, great. Okay, fantastic. Well, with that, now let's talk about how we can help you take what Microsoft offers and enhance that uh, with our partners. Uh, uh, we're going to start out with Palo Alto and talk about how they can help you enhance what you're doing in Office 365 today and their top five concerns that they're handling for customers right now. Um, and with that, I'm, I'm going to have Modal uh, go first. And Modal, let's talk about Shadow IT. I know that that's one of the big concerns out there that you handle every day. That's right, Kevin. Um, well, first of all, thanks. Uh, and folks, good afternoon. Thanks for taking the time. Um, yes, uh, so for any organizations, regardless they're using Office 365 or not, um, the very first concern that we hear about is the visibility problem. Um, the CIOs and CISOs of the company, they know Shadow IT exists in their organization and uh, they want to know more about it. Um, you know, when we work with these organizations, it's not only the file sharing applications that, that CIOs and CISOs are concerned about. They know that uh, their users are using CRM applications, different development tools that are SaaS based, uh, marketing tools and, and etc. Right? So, from visibility perspective, uh, there are uh, there are many different things that we hear. Um, you know, from concern perspective, they want to know what SaaS applications are being installed by individual users, different views and departments. How much data is being uploaded to these applications? Um, what are the most popular SaaS applications within their organizations? Which users and user groups are using these applications? Right. Um, now, now the question you would ask, why? You know, why it is important for CIOs and CISOs? Um, you know, they're seeking for this info. 
Interestingly, it is not about just blocking applications that are not secure or enterprise ready, but it is more about allowing users what they need. Um, simply blocking shadow IT is self-defeating. Self Staff knows which applications are best for their own task and they will continue to look for a way to use them, right? So, so that's the concern, uh, existence of shadow IT. Now from solution perspective, um, you know, before I talk about solution, uh, let me share this, right? In order for anyone to provide um, that kind of visibility, you need to be in the traffic path. And Palo Alto Networks with our next-gen firewall, it is in the best place to see all SaaS traffic because we are at the internet egress and we see everything. Um, we have a SaaS application usage report comes straight from the next-gen firewall. Um, for senior management folks, IT can simply download a PDF report and, and, and distribute that report or uh, they can send the report directly from the system. Um, for SecOps people, um, you know, they can look at the dashboard and they can slice and dice the data in many different ways depending on uh, what is important for them. Uh, so if you have, um, and, and if you have um, uh, more than one next-gen firewall, you can get the report from Panorama, which is the single pane of glass for managing multiple devices. So, Modal, just, just okay. so I, I understand this too, because you're using a device that looks at the traffic, you don't have to install an agent on everybody's PC or on the server or anything like that. You get this information right off the wire. That's right. Um, you know, uh, again, from next-gen firewall perspective, um, you know, we are, at the, we are at the internet egress. And, uh, you know, the on-prem users, you know, their traffic is going through the, um, going through the firewall. Now, if you want to see remote users traffic, um, you know, uh, they do not have to install anything because, you know, most organizations already has a VPN client and through that VPN client, the traffic is traversing through our next-gen firewall. So we see everything. Okay, great. Right. Well, let's take a look at our next one. So visibility into Office 365. How do you help get even more visibility into their environment? Yes, um, so, you know, fr from, from uh, uh, Office 365 visibility perspective, what enterprises are looking for is really intelligent analytics, right? Um, um, you know, as, as users are using OneDrive, SharePoint Online, Office Email, and other Office 365 apps, uh, they want to understand the usage in very details, how much data is being uploaded versus downloaded, what kind of data is leaving the premise, um, is anyone using corporate version of Office 365, sorry, uh, personal versus of, uh, version of Office 365, um, and, and all the detailed information. Now, you know, from Office 365 visibility, we, we do, it, do it at two different places. Um, so for data in transit, uh, assuming SSL decryption is on, we use our app ID and function control features to provide deep, deep analytics. Um, as data is going through our next-gen firewall, we decrypt SSL, we look deeper into the packet and understand what type of functions are being used within those applications. And at the same time, we also look at the content, right? So um, the, the focus here is, uh, is, is sensitive uh, content is leaving the premise, right? Um, and then the second point, uh, which is data at rest. Uh, once the data rests on OneDrive and we have a cloud-based CASB product called Aperture. Uh, Aperture connects to Office 365 via API. And then from visibility perspective, we focus on malicious content. Um, uh, our, our malware uh, being uploaded or our, our malware is being downloaded from Office 365 applications into the network and, uh, and on endpoints. Um, we scan through the data. We've, we also figure out if the sensitive company information is being shared uh, with external collaborators or public URLs, right? So, so so from visibility perspective, Office 365 visibility perspective, we do it again in inline mode as well as once the data rests on OneDrive, uh, we provide uh, many different aspects of this visibility that is above and beyond the application. 
All right, great. Uh, and, and, you know, having more insight into what's in, in obviously, OneDrive and SharePoint, too, right? Right, right. So That's having right. more insight into who's accessing it and what's in there is, is, is pretty important, I think, to people. So let's talk about malware. How, how do you guys help when it comes to malware? Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's it's very easy for for malware to propagate through these to these file sharing applications, right? I will give you a couple of examples. Um, you know, um, let's say an IT user downloads a malicious .exe file from the internet and stores it in a folder called IT install, right? Um, anyone, any other employees who has access to this folder, um, you know, uh, as soon as they download this file, can be infected. Uh, simply by just downloading it from from that OneDrive folder. Another example, you know, these applications are highly collaborative, uh, so users are constantly collaborating with external users. So uh, an external user uploads the PDF file, and that PDF file is running macro um, and happens to be an unknown threat, right? Um, so um, uh, you know, again, the, if, if the internal users are also collaborating on that particular folder, it's it's easy for them to just just download it um, from from the OneDrive account and then get infected, right? So the way we tackle this problem, uh, we have a, a sandbox uh, called Wildfire in the cloud, um, and and by the way, Wildfire is 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 probably one of the biggest sandbox you can find uh, today. Uh, more than ten thousand organizations are using our Wildfire service. Aperture is fully integrated with Wildfire. Um, so when Aperture connects to your Office 365 account, um, we go through every single asset, every single files and folders, and uh, you know basically we run a static and dynamic analysis, right? So it's hash based. We collect all the hash and we talk to Wildfire. If Wildfire says, "Hey, this is a malicious file," then Aperture takes action. If it if it is an unknown file, an unknown PDF or Office documents then we send that entire file to Wildfire. Wildfire sandbox that file. Within five minutes, we get a verdict from Wildfire, and then based on the verdict, Aperture takes an action. Right? So, so it is full protection from, from malicious files, the, the malicious content, and advanced persistent threat. Now, is that across all applications in Office 365? Uh, that's, that's primarily for OneDrive and SharePoint Online. Okay, I will just I will just move on to the next slide. Um, so the so the next uh, the, the the next concern that, that that we hear about is the accidental data data sharing problem. Um, again, this is this is this is happening all the time. Um, you know, a couple of examples. Um, you know, Jane wants to share a sensitive legal document with Bob. Bob then shares that document with his entire team, and then one of the team members then shares the folder with an external collaborator and and when when that happens um, you know basically the, the the owner of the file the original owner no longer knows well that where that file is moving right so so again it's an accidental share sharing problem uh, it is happening all the time also the end user uh, they sometimes they do not they do not understand how to share sensitive information securely um, you know, oftentimes we see sensitive file is being shared with a public URL, with vanity URL, with external collaborators, and 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 these are the problems that Aperture can detect immediately. As soon as we connect via API, um, we go through the sensitive content, what kind of content it is. Um, we we do that based on you know simple keywords and pattern matching, regular expressions industry standard uh, classifiers like TCI, PII, PHI. Uh, we can detect credit card numbers, social security numbers. Once we detect this sensitive content, then we also look at the context around the usage, right? So if a file is being shared with an external collaborator or if a file is being shared with a public URL, these are the behaviors that Aperture will tag as a risky behavior and then um, Aperture provides an interface to IT admin to to take appropriate actions. So are these just templates that you can turn on and off, like if you're PCI or HIPAA or w whatever the compliance regulation is, that you can turn on and off in Aperture? 
That is correct. Yes. So there are there are a bunch of predefined profiles. Uh, the DLP profiles are already there. You can simply turn it on. Uh, in addition to that, you can also create your own custom custom profile uh, and then you know be very specific about uh, what is sensitive uh, for your own organization. Right. So if you have a, a, account numbers or things like that are in, in a certain format, you can include those. That is correct. Okay. That is great. All right. And, and then last but not least, malicious data. Boy, that this is something that, that everyone's talking about today. <laughs> right. Um, interestingly, this is not very common, uh, but, but definitely an issue organization wants to tackle, right? This is the classic use case of disgruntled employees, right? Um, um, you know, uh, through Aperture experience, what we have seen is, you know, sensitive financial and legal documents are being shared with personal Gmail accounts. Um, we have seen thousands of sensitive source code files are being exposed with vanity URL so that the user can access and download this file from their BYOD devices from home, right? So, so um, these are definitely the use cases that, that organizations uh, want to tackle. And then the aperture again, you know, uh, it's uh, you know, um, it's a simple process in a sense that you know, aperture is is one of the services that aperture provides is full cloud DLP, right? So once again, you can uh, you can you can create your policies in aperture, tell us what is sensitive for your organization, and then when we connect to your Office 365 account, we go through all the assets, we go through all the files and folders and users to first locate what are the sensitive content and then if a user uh, was sharing you know company source code file with his personal gmail account uh, we can simply just just delete that sharing um, if we find a sensitive asset being shared with a public url or vanity url we can simply remove it okay okay um, there, there's just a couple questions that came in here by the way uh, you Anyone that's out there, you can ask questions as we go. Uh, I, I know that there's a couple people that said where they're having a hard time hearing. There's some background noise, and I've been muting my mic while while Modals has, has been speaking. I, I hope that that's helped. Um, so one of the things is there a a, a secure score uh, utility accessible from the dashboard or external link, Jim? Do you know? This comes from Jamie. Is there an external, it's available, basically the link, we'll give it to you at the end of the meeting, but it's securescore.office.com and you can sign up for it. Okay, and then for Modal, they, they ask, uh, is Aperture in the, the Microsoft Store or do they have to go through a partner like Champion or, or obviously uh, uh, through Palo Alto? Is the latter, yes. Yeah, um, so... Uh, just wanted to make sure. All right. Well, Moto, thank you very much. Stick around. I'm sure there's going to be some more questions coming in as we go. Um, but uh, sure. And I will try to answer them as, as you type them in here. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to Killian. And Killian will be uh, talking about how Veronis can enhance uh, that your environment and talking about the visibility on all your unstructured file sharing applications in Office 365. Killian, are you out there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, thank you again for everyone for taking some time out today to join. Uh, I just really want to kind of start off laying some groundwork here. So what Veronis is concerned about is all of this unstructured data that everybody has uh, and really about securing it from the inside out. Now, if you think about the data that you have on-premise, it's really easy to think, you know, it's behind the firewall on the network. It's kind of easy to visualize that. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, Office 365, it's kind of the exact same concept except for somebody else is hosting it for you. So you have the same type of concerns that you would with your internal data. It just doesn't happen to live on premise. And really what we're concerned about is the folks that have legitimate access to it. Um, the people who are working for your organization. And what we want to do is we want to look at that, figure out how they're getting to data and how they're using the data. And of course, what type of data is being stored out there, um, what's sensitive, um, what's confidential, and making sure that it's aligned with the right folks and it's controlled appropriately. So just like you don't want 
uh, your sensitive data being shared uh, via an external link. Inside the company, if you think folks are working together on different projects and different roles change over time, uh, people tend to accumulate access. And as those roles change, the need to have access to that data changes along with it. And we want to make sure we constantly give you the ability to line this up, regardless of course of the person is accessing the data um, from inside the network, from their laptop on the go, from the mobile phone. Um, we want to again make sure that the data being stored on your Office 365 solution is lined up correctly and we always know how folks are using the data and if that access is appropriate or abusive. All right, great. Well, and, and I'll tell you, unstructured data from, from what all the industry is telling us, that's 80% of your, of your information out there. And in Office 365, it's the majority of your information. So very, very important to know actually who's looking at it and so on, right? Yep, correct. All right, well, how about, you know, um, with, with yours, you know, your deep analytics that you can get from your Office 365 usage. Yep, this is, this is the logical extension of our core kind of beliefs about protecting this type of data. Uh, and what we do is, again, we do this on-premise, uh, on, in Office 365, we want to give our customers a complete view of what's going on everywhere. So as they make the decision to move certain data sets, maybe they want to migrate their on-prem SharePoint to the cloud or uh, exchange, um, or just moving data off their legacy file systems onto SharePoint Online or OneDrive. We want to make sure they have this complete visibility. So with a couple key pieces of information and a little bit of special sauce on our site to combine them, this is the type of information we get out, this deep analytics. So first off, what we do is we figure out everybody who's at play. So again, everybody in your on-prem AD, your Azure AD, we want to figure out who the players are in the environment, because that's going to be key to informing some of the rest of the decisions downstream. The next is we have all of the auditing information. So we know what data they're accessing, how they're getting to it, uh, based on what rights, and of course, the content of the data. And we can classify that ourselves. Um, where we can import it from a third party. Uh, it just depends on what our uh, customers are looking to do. But that gives us a couple of key pieces of indicators, the, you know, the what, the where, um, and we combine them together to provide risk over time. So if we look at people, how they typically behave as they access data and work with it and change um, projects and roles, we develop a baseline for each individual in the organization be it a regular user administrator um, in office, not really service accounts so much, but on-prem service accounts, and figure out how they typically operate. That way, when something um, starts to, to change, we can flag that and say, hey, wait a minute, this looks different from before. This is something that you might want to pay attention to. And that's kind of what we're looking at here is our threat dashboard. Um, it gives us kind of the, the top users in the environment. And if you think about it, um, we're focused on that internal threat. So either a user gone rogue, or maybe somebody with compromised credentials. So an outside attacker has done a targeted attack, maybe fished some credentials off of a user, and they're uh, purporting to be them in the environment. So that user has a certain level of entitlement. They have access to data legitimately. And we're going to analyze how they access it to spot those deviations. So uh, again, if they're maybe changing jobs and they say, listen, the guy down the street gave me a better offer. I want to take the data that I worked on, go to them, you know, business plans, whatever it happens to be. We want to be able to flag that and say, hey, wait a minute, this is something you need to focus on. They're doing something suspicious. We need to stop their access. And we need to get that data as quickly as possible. Uh, and then some of the other kind of big ones, too, um, are ransomware. So far, uh, as far as I know, and I do a lot of reading on this, I haven't seen any ransomware that targets uh, Office 365 specifically yet. Um, but as more people adopt it, it's probably going to become a more tempting target for those attackers. One of our keys is analyzing behavior to detect uh, some of those malicious activities that might look like ransomware um, or other uh, malicious behavior to alert people ahead of time. So, I, I mean, it's, it seems like you really go way beyond what Microsoft gives you from, uh, especially when you're looking at what people are normally doing and when they go out of profile. That's an important thing, especially when we're talking about the cloud and, and having access from anywhere it seems like this is an important tool that most people would have to have. I, I mean, I would absolutely agree, but, you know, I'm paid to agree, but our customers definitely, they see the value in this. I mean, it's all a matter of a layered security approach as well, too. All right, and I know we talked with, with Palo Alto, but you guys also 
do a lot around compliancy, right? PCI, um, uh, PII, and so on. Can, can you tell us how you help us keep or help the customers keep compliant? Absolutely. Um, it's kind of very core to our central message, too. Uh, the thing that, that I think trips up a lot of folks when dealing with compliance, especially with the cloud, is that there's no more transference of risk. They've closed that loophole, as a lot of the regulators um, have closed that loophole. So the business is still responsible for the data no matter where it lives, on-prem, off-prem, doesn't matter. It's still up to them to maintain the integrity uh, and the security of the data. So there's not really that um, kind of risk transference or insurance in some ways that people can get from moving the data to a cloud, say, oh, Microsoft, it lives there, so they're responsible for it. So we want to put all of the context around it. Um, Again, we can detect sensitive data living in your you know, SharePoint or your OneDrive for Business. I know Palo Alto can too, and there's a lot of great solutions for this. Um, we can do it as well. It's one of our offerings at the box. Um, but regardless of how we get that content information, be it Veronis or another source, we want to put all of that rest of the context around it. Uh, we want to tell you where it lives in the context of the rest of the environment. And not only that, who can get access to it, so what the potential access looks like on it, so, you know, me logging into Office 365 into SharePoint, based on my permissions, um, what could I possibly get at? You know, what does my account entitle me to access based on how that's set up there? That's kind of key to understanding what that potential risk looks like. And we, of course, have a risk score that goes along with it. So data exposed to, you know, everybody or a large number of folks will be much more um, at risk than something that's sensitive but controlled to a smaller number of people. And then we also wrap the activity around it. So not only who could potentially get access to it, and again, just reporting on that is highly valuable, but who is accessing it. And then if we kind of think about the previous slide I talked about, running that through uh, some behavioral models and say, wait a minute, does this access look consistent with that person over time? Um, they might have the access. Um, they might use the access. But is the current level of behavior consistent with what was observed in the past? And of course, um, one step further, just because somebody has access to data doesn't mean they necessarily need that access based on how they behave. So we can provide um, recommendations where some of this access could be revoked. As I mentioned, people move around, they change roles. We live in a highly collaborative and uh, where we get the most out of folks by collaborating, working together on different um, teams. I mean, just, this, just like this webinar, lots of different teams coming together um, to collaborate on something. Um, same thing applies with all areas of the business. But what we do is we look at, again, who has access, who um, is using their access, to give you an idea of maybe who should or shouldn't, where some of that can be pulled back, to make sure that only the right folks have access to the data they need to accomplish their job and you know, no more. And as their role changes, uh, we kind of rein back in their access if it's no longer needed. Now, I noticed that this says a report. So you can generate reports for when you have your audits, like if you have a HIPAA audit or a PCI audit, you can pull these, these reports down uh, so that your auditors can, can then take a look at them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can get it out, again, in report format to anybody who wants uh, or needs access to it. Um, the other thing we can do, too, is we can involve the business in the decision process as well. Um, getting kind of the, the first eyes on it. So if you think about an audit process, I'll step back. Um, you typically see a bit of a kind of a cyclic environment where when the audit's coming up, people are very concerned about passing the audit. So they'll uh, go in and look at the controls. We want to smooth that process out by getting this data to the right business folks and the people on the business side who really understand the data out there uh, to look at it and again, make sure that things are lined up and the access is correct. That way when the auditor do come along and ask for it, um, there's not a lot of time or project or hassle involved in remediating potentially. So we can absolutely get the reports out, but we can get the business involved beforehand as well too. Okay, so, uh, and then, you know, one of the things that people are worried about is intellectual property, a capital that they've that they've developed inside their corporation. How can you help protect that? So the great thing is we've seen how we do it already. Um, it's kind of the, the core and the DNA of Veronis is throughout the life cycle, and this is a, a great little um, description, if you think about every business, it doesn't matter you know, what you're producing. 
Um, everybody's in business because they have something that's valuable. Again, it's intellectual property, it's personal information, it's, uh, I don't know, a pancake recipe. Whatever it is, uh, companies are in business because they have something that's valuable. So we want to make sure that throughout the entire life cycle of the document, so from the time it's created, we've, uh, we can identify it as sensitive, we can classify it in some way, and then we can track who's accessing it, where it's going across the Unstructured platform. So if, you know, initially I created on my, you know, I don't know, file share inside the organization, uh, we want to make sure that it's detected. And then as the document migrates, maybe to SharePoint Online or OneDrive, um, we want to be able to make sure we have an audit to know who put it where, when, and make sure that it's adequately protected across the entire life cycle. Um, and that way, uh, of course, you know, keeping eyes on it is kind of the most important portion of it. I'm making sure that only the right people can access it. Uh, and even when they can, we know what they're doing with it too. And then it's just accountability kind of across the entire chain. Uh, that, that's real important uh, any business that's out there trying to grow. And last but not least, Killian, is, you know, Office 365 applications with malware and, and advanced persistent threats, where do you guys play in there? So that um, kind of goes back to the ransomware example I talked about earlier. Uh, if you think about it, um, it's a huge business for ransomware nowadays, uh, targeting organizations. Um, again, in my previous slide, companies are in business for a reason. They have something valuable. Uh, you know, the old model that the criminals used to take is they would try and steal the data and then sell it to the highest bidder on the Internet. Well, that you know, whole process is predicated on a number of things, somebody else wanting the data, somebody else willing to pay for it. Uh, but with ransomware, for example, they have someone guaranteed to pay for it, the company who created it, who needs it, uh, who it's definitely valuable to. So we want to look at, again, how the data is being used and how it's being accessed to identify signs of um, malicious behavior. Um, again, I, I love the ransomware example because it's so palpable to everybody in the security world and the infrastructure world because we've probably all known somebody or had to deal with it ourselves. Um, but if you think about it, it's a victim of its own success in a lot of ways. Um, these, you know, malware, the other types of similar advanced persistent threats, they don't behave like people. They're programs, they're services, essentially. And they have a, a pattern of behavior that's readily identifiable if you know what to look for. And again, based on the information that we collect and the baselines on folks that uh, we develop over time, we know how those people behave. And we can spot human behavior versus uh, automa uh, automated behavior um, or those uh, programmatic behaviors. And we want to, again, spot that and alert people as quickly as possible to first stop the threat as quickly as we can detect it, and then give them the tools to remediate. Uh, we almost have to operate any more like we've been breached. And it's kind of a sad reality of security right now that kind of the default state is, hey, let's just assume that we're compromised. We want to give uh, organizations the tools to stop it as soon as we can find it and then get back to an operational state um, as quickly as possible with the minimum amount of uh, restore and effort. Well, and, and uh, we, we did have a question here from uh, Adrian. He wanted to know if Veronis was available in the Microsoft Store. And I know it's not. I know that uh, luckily we have a very close relationship with also Veronis and help customers uh, get involved and at the end of, of this webinar, which is not that long, you'll find a way to get uh, both uh, Palo Alto and Veronis in your environment, uh, be able to see how it works and, and really work with the product. And I know that, uh, you know, we work with the, the Veronis and the Palo Alto teams across the country to help customers uh, really secure their environment and you know we'll be showing you how to do that uh, also these slides will be available to everyone that's that's on the webinar and we're also recording this so that if uh, you want other people in your organization to hear what Killian what Modal had to say uh, I, and Jim uh, I, I think it'll be uh, very valuable to them and, and Killian thanks thank you very much for for helping us and you know one of the things that with, with Office 365 security and compliance is Microsoft does do a good job. They do. Um, but if you take a look at here, in, in the yellow areas is where Microsoft and our partners help you secure your Office 365 environment and take it to that next level. But you guys have to make sure 
that you're looking at the, the dark blue area from a compliance and user access and antivirus, anti-spam and so on. That's really your responsibility. And then, you know, obviously independent verification uh, from companies like Palo Alto, from companies like Veronis to help you make sure that you're compliant for whatever industry you might be, whether it's HIPAA for healthcare or SOX if you're a public company or PCI if you're, you know, taking credit cards or so on. It's, it's really important that you understand that this is a team effort. It's, it's Microsoft, it's you, and it's our partners or your partners that help you secure your environment going forward. And, and that's where uh, Champion and, and uh, our partners with Microsoft and Veronis and, and Palo Alto can really give you the best of both worlds, give you that access to the cloud, but also make sure that it's secure and monitored so that you can see what's going on in your environment. And really the way that we do that is we assess your environment first. Then we sit down and develop a strategy around your cloud, uh, around the cloud, whether it's, you know, in Microsoft or, or in, you know, Salesforce.com or AWS or wherever you are. And then we help you do the testing and you'll see that we're going to give you some of the tools the, to help do that testing. And then obviously the deployment and the configuration, uh, the most important part of it. And, and we can walk you through uh, this methodology that's worked for hundreds of customers uh, and, and millions of users that, that we've helped get into the cloud. Uh, and really our, our call to action is you can go in and actually get a free assessment. Uh, and this is something that Veronis helps us with quite a bit. It gives us the ability to install it in your location, uh, let you take a look at what's happening today, how your governance is set up, how your compliance is set up. Uh, you can also get a free evaluation of Aperture that then you could go and take a look at your, uh, you know, your OneDrive in the cloud, your, your SharePoint in the cloud, and get that information that Modal was talking about. We also, if you go to our website, championsg.com slash events, you'll see some of the other webinars and local events in your area that, you know, focus on this and other topics. And then last but not least, there's a quick security survey that we have put together with security experts. It's, I think it's like 10 or 15 questions. It's not very long. And it'll actually give you an idea of what your risk is and whether, you know, Veronis and, and Palo Alto and Champion can help you moving forward. Uh, if, if you have any questions, I'm going to leave the mic open here for just a few minutes. Uh, just type them in the question box. Uh, Jim is here and, and Killian's here and Modo's here and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. You can always call us, though, at 877-788. 1617 and one of our uh, uh, one of our people here at Champion will be more than happy to help you. I'm going to leave it open here for just a couple of minutes and see if anybody has any questions. Uh, Modal, do you want to add anything here at the end? Um, yeah, so I mean I think I think one of the things like as you uh, as we went through this webinar we noticed that you know there are security features uh, that are built in with Office 365 applications um, there are you know vendors uh, you know like like Palo Alto and Veronas uh, we all provide Office 365 application security uh, from many different aspects but from from Palo Alto perspective you know when organizations are considering Palo Alto networks um, you know, it's 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 not only about just Office 365 security, but but it is about all applications and then data within these applications, right? So, um, you know, we have been doing security for the last 10 years. Um, in the past, we, uh, you know, we, with our next-gen firewall, we secured all your data and applications that are on-prem. As organizations started migrating some applications to public cloud like AWS and Azure, we secured those applications as well, and then now, uh, organizations are migrating to SaaS, and through Aperture, uh, we are doing this, um, you know, uh, all this security. So, so once again, you know, from Palo Alto perspective, it's not just one application, but Palo Alto is there to secure all applications and data. Right. 
Well, thanks, Modo. And, and Killian, any last thoughts here? I, I don't have any questions, but any last thoughts before we uh, say goodbye? Uh, that, that was a great summary, um, and and I completely agree. I mean, Vernus takes a very similar approach. Uh, it's all about defense in depth and multiple layers of security. Uh, there's a good analogy I read uh, somewhere recently. Um, it's kind of like a stack of Swiss cheese. Um, every security, you know, uh, defense is going to have, you know, potential overlaps and potential holes where one solution fills and another one doesn't. And it's just a matter of lining those up so that if one um, goes through one layer, there's always a different layer there. Uh, and Veronis, of course, has been in business for uh, over 10 years, 11 years now, actually. Um, and that's exactly, we had kind of a similar type of growth. Uh, we started protecting the data on-premise where it lived. And as our customers evolved and new solutions became available to make them um, more efficient, we wanted to be there with them to protect their data, you know, again, if it's on-prem or in Office 365. And we want to give them the same capability and visibility they've come to trust and rely on from Veronis. Well, thanks, Kelly. And, and, and thanks, Modo. We really appreciate both Palo Alto and Veronis participating today. And I think our customers got a lot out of this. With that, I'm going to close the webinar and thank everyone for their attendance. Uh, I hope it was worth your time. You will be getting an email from us with the slides and a link to uh, a recording of this webinar. Thanks, and have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.